the No Holds Barred Witchcraft Podcast, and today we're talking about seats of power. Term, phrase, whatever gets banded around a lot. Let's see who agrees with us as to what the definition is. So what is a seat of power? Mr. Chris, you've got experience with such matters. Have you been a seat? Or have you give it bit had things that are you've sat upon? A bit of both. You know me. You've haven't you? A bit of both. Like uh, Jesus' dad, the old carpenter, you made a few seats in your time. I have made a few seats. I've also worn out a few seats. <laughs> So, yeah, I think the people that were asking us about this were kind of going, I think, a mixture of places. So we've got a lot to cover, cover, I think. The two kind of main areas I think they want us to talk about is one, that kind of inherited seat, that kind of priesthoodness or priestessness of or belonging to something to allow um, an entity to work through you or with you and then I think that the other part is creating seats um, such as kind of uh, places for a, a spirits to take seats in in a kind of council setting where you can necessarily take kind of campfire round <laughs> from multiple people you think that was fair to say? So, starting with a definition of a seat, because we may disagree, I don't know. A seat is something that you sit upon. Most of the time, I think of seat as quite grand, as in a throne. Okay, so that kind of a seat. Because normally when you're talking goddesses, spirits, gods, deities, it's really like a throne. And what is a throne? Well... A throne is something that has power that grounds you at the forefront. You are there or in your throne. Everyone knows and can see who's in charge, right? If you have a seat and you're a seat at a council around a big round table and being at one of them for a while, then everyone there is an equal. So they're all kind of like individual thrones, but it's something that you sit upon. So with regards to a seat, and relating that to a spirit or potentially even an energy stream but let's say a spirit because the spirit would be sentient if a spirit is to sit upon something or to sit upon a seat that means it essentially rules it it commands from it to a certain extent is a position that it fixes itself in because when you're sat in a seat you're in the seat when you're up and about you're wandering around now, with regards to spirits and seats and stuff, now we could think of a medium, okay? So you think priest, priestess of some kind of, I don't know, magical occult lodge or organization, mystery school, priesthood, priestesshood, whatever. They would be a seat because they're a medium. So the, the spirit sits upon them. It acts through them to a certain extent, takes over. That would be my interpretation of a seat. A seat remains still, is a carrier. It carries the spirit. So I would say you're normally talking about mediumship, but that is in regards to a seat being a person or a person acting as a seat. But there could potentially imagine a forest or a tree or something like that. Does that mean that that, because it's not a human, it can't move around in that. Does that mean that that cannot hold the consciousness of a spirit? So if you were to create a seat for a spirit, it is essentially the spirit sits in as housed to a certain extent within it. You see throughout history, you remember the Egyptians and they were very big on their ornamental houses for the gods, you know, um, idols and that kind of thing. They would parade them about and it was it was thought that the god lived and was housed within that's kind of a seat to a certain extent 
but that's what I think that we're generally talking about there. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about, yes, a permanent space that is available to a per to a entity to take hold, shall we say. Because that's the that's the beauty of a throne, isn't it? Is that it still holds power even when it's not um when it's vacant. Mm -hmm. Um the throne is still there as a representation of that power. Um I thought if we had time we might get to the point of talking about avatars um in the kind of extended version but um there's so much ground to cover that we'll see if we get there so if we go for the most simple then so if mm -hmm. we go for the mediumship the whole idea of why it would be useful to be able to tap in or create a throne for a particular entity or energy stream So if we're going for general spirits, do you think of mediums as in the local medium that you go and they tend to tell you or get possessed by dead people and shit like that? From that perspective, it's usually a case of they're dealing with spirits that cannot manifest in this world. They're, they're not, uh, they've got some component parts missing, I suppose, in this reality, so therefore cannot manifest walking talking physical flesh therefore or it's a little bit strange so housing and working through a medium dead people for example uh, the body parts don't move anymore so even if you were to attach a consciousness to a corpse it's not necessarily going to be able to get up and that if it's rotting around so therefore it's easier to go through the doorway through the gateway of the somewhere between this realm and the astral latch on and control intercept go through that medium that um psychic medium and interact with people when you see it happen on an energetic level it happens somewhere between what i suppose you'd say is the unconscious and the astral there's a latching on you can see an effect where a spirit takes over and controls the body and the not necessarily soul but the consciousness of the person because the soul still remains tacked and linked to the body but the consciousness of, of the person moves out okay gets pushed to the side in which case is not really being moved out it's more like being displaced back in the day there was this old-fashioned thing called analog television and way back in the day there were various hackers and such like that that what they would do there was a very famous case i think it was doctor who or something where they would hack into television networks but they would do it by overpowering the signal so the standard signal that you would get your television would pick up on what they would do is they could create a stronger signal on that frequency so that everyone's television or radio or whatever would pick that up if it was in the vicinity that is basically how basic spirit possession tends to work so the infrastructure for the human is still there the soul is still attached what happens is a very strong directed force that you can see enter that latches onto that part of the lower aspects of the soul i know we're getting super complicated which we'd normally leave for the patreon that's why if you're not on the patreon it's well worth getting on it because we go into more technical details as well as gossip and schmutt you know but anyway that is it that is the penetrating signal so for a general medium they pick on on various different things they're easy I don't want to sound dirty but it's easy for them to be penetrated that signal there there is latch on points to a certain extent that is what you train you train to be more liquid more lucid there you can pick up sense things but also other things can come in there's the difference between psychic generally speaking and mediumship mediumship is that open is almost like having a spaceship with a docking port yeah you can have a spaceship but the spaceship might not have a docking port psychic there we go you could do psychic work but mediumship is you've got that entry point for that latching on point okay um when it comes to the more complicated routes 
it is we talk about avatars and priests true priests priestesses of a specific deity spirit that kind of thing but what we will probably need to get to first is how does how does one become a seat because mediums can become seats for a lot of different things generally speaking you tend to find mediums will get on better with certain energies now i've met many mediums as you have chris from doing psychic fairs and various other things in the magical and mundane world and they'll specialize so you'll get one that always talks to fucking angels one that talks to dead people that and the, the other to the point where they don't actually believe like the um because the spirit person that they use as a spirit guide or the person or thing that they interact with appears to be an angel or is that kind of an energetic current they can't see the dead people they can't interact with them. they don't even think dead people exist they think it's all something else right same with angels they can't necessarily see that some people that are tuned into that frequency that can hold that energy naturally only can cope with or only can interact with that energy and therefore can only become a seat for it now mediumship is partly an out of the box thing so some people are born natural mediums in which case they will be attuned to certain frequencies and can hold the energies or become a vessel or a seat for those energies but other energies they can't the problem with mediumship psychic mediums and psychics and all of that is that very often most of them are very poorly trained yeah. when they are trained they're normally trained by other mediums and other psychics they're in a similar type to their own themselves when it comes to witchcraft and magic what we tend to think of is look at mediumship as an art being a vessel seats that sort of thing as an art and see understand the mechanics of how it works and therefore we can understand and create rituals and processes for altering that frequency for example chris when we had terrestrial television, we had five channels. At least we did in my day. I know way back when the older ones will only have one channel, you know, BBC One. And then BBC Two came along and then ITV and then Channel Four, and then Channel Five, blah, blah, blah. But then there was this whole thing called satellite and cable and you needed a little box, you needed extras, right? You couldn't just buy the television. You had to buy a box and subscribe to something, right? That's a little bit similar to this there's decoding you need infrastructure you need extra stuff mediumship is not just mediumship yes there is an interlocking in certain energetic areas of the person in order for you to hold that but please be aware that not every energy is the same and because you may be set up to hold a certain energy it does not mean that you can hold every energy now yes. humans in general make for quite poor receptors for this kind of thing that's why as they say in certain traditions the horse is getting tired i.e humans can only maintain a connection can only keep that going for so long before it fatigues and damages the body now you can undergo certain ritual preparations you can train like you can with anything to augment your body to get faster stronger smarter bloody bloody blah, 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 blah but what you would normally do from a priest priestess situation would you would be attuning yourself to a specific energy so if you were to work with a specific god deity goddess whatever you would be working towards becoming a more and more suitable vessel for that spirit to hold it for longer periods of time blah 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 and the process is although somewhat similar very realistically in terms of the training that one needs to undergo because it will depend on both the person the out of the box who you are your general energetic makeup physiology and that but also the spirit that you're trying to hold that's why it becomes all of a sudden super fucking complicated and chris i bet those bloody wiccan books didn't teach them that did they this is where i find it quite interesting in terms of the glastonbury cults of where they become the seat for multiple deities um and only need to, a year to train each one like do you know what i mean like i struggle with this concept of in a year you could prepare yourself in order to have one and then the week the next year prepare yourself to hold a different deity um uh. um in that kind of you know making sure 
is that the wear and tear that is required in order to do that is is insane um i will add a little sidestep here which is obviously um anim animal vessels and by that i don't mean familiars before anybody gets all excited we'll do a separate thing on on familiars in the future um very different kettle of fish um but there is there is a part of particularly the egyptian um methodology of having cult animals um and actually having a precinct that would have been full of those animals oh. is allowing that energy to flow through a space and to kind of share the burden of having um the other part is it is a lot easier as you well know liam because you you're quite well versed in possession work it is a lot easier to observe something else being possessed uh, than it is necessary to hold any part of your faculty after um you've you know you've held a spirit of a particular size um so i personally work with um deities a lot and the easiest way for me to work with them involves kind of um you know blessed animals um uh, that are able to hold those signatures and learn to do so from a very young age um it you know tends to wear out the vessel eventually so it's not something you want to be doing all the time um but it's one of those <laughs> options for um yeah. understanding and gathering, um having that two-way communication which is not something easy to do with seats of power yeah well, so with the seats of power what we need to establish and what is really important for people to wrap their heads around is what would be considered i suppose a permanent seat of power or permanent seat vessel whatever and one that is just kind of swippy swappy you know change change a rooney i'm saying random shit <laughs> Because a priest, priestess hood and avatars, that would be considered permanent seat of power. In that case, in my perspective or from my perspective, and I'm not speaking for you by any stretch of the imagination, so we'll see if you agree with me. Um, the wand chooses the wizard, Harry. Yes. So I'm yet to find anyone that has not already got the facility albeit switched off already has the facility and a connection to a specific deity that that is basically happened from birth so it's a case of that is a grown seat from birth so that person has that faculty there again whether it's switched on or off doesn't matter for that specific energy, for that specific deity. Does that mean that that person does not need training? No, we are humans. We don't just pop out the wound like this, or a hatch in my case. Um, mm -hmm. Fully formed, we grow as with magically related as well. You can, you may start to if you were in that situation. And I did a interesting uh, cult ramblings on the tier two of the Thoth Witch Pair Patreon about demigods and such, which that covered probably in a bit more detail. But that is something that you would grow, something that you would take on, that connection would grow. So it's not like out of the box is perfect and flawless. It still takes some calibration, I suppose, I should say. The ones that most people will be familiar with, however, are general... Uh, mediumship ability that gets discussed mm -hmm. most that's what most people are used to that's what you would find at a psychic fair you would tend to find generally speaking a medium that is open to communicating that can see sense or see you know spirits in some capacity communicate with them and relay messages and such occasionally you get mediums that will form a seat now from any of that that you disagree with? I'm curious. 
Um, no, not particularly. Obviously, it's slightly different for me, obviously, but that's because we're going closer to what we talked about. Well, you intimated at earlier, which is the difference between a deity and a stream of consciousness. But yeah. um, yes. So the spirit, uh, psychic medium at the local um, psychic fair, let's say Great Travelling Psychic Fair, let's call her Madame Delilah. So Madame Delilah, she may get her tarot cards out, she may use her crystal ball, she may see grandma, granddad over your shoulder and all of that. That's not what I'd consider to be a seat of power because they're seeing, yeah. they're using some kind of visual psychic ability to see. What is a seat of power is when you take on the mantle of that spirit. So when that spirit comes inside you, that sounds super fucking dirty now, doesn't it? When you hold that spirit, when that spirit is sat upon you, when that spirit rides you, I get that from the hoodoo voodoo community. They say horses and that. Yeah. But you are the seat there. You It takes over. You see, this is possession. That is what is spoken about by possession. Now, a lot of mediums and psychics won't necessarily use possession i don't know if i would say it's necessarily dying out i don't think it's really dying out i think what's happening is there's becoming less and less specialists with regards to mediumship um yeah. with stronger energies let's say most of the mediumship you see tends to involve dead people most of the time and dead people take a lot of energy to help come through and manifest that's why it fatigues the medium the psychic medium and that because it is difficult i personally find dead people holding dead people the energy spirit of dead people's for mediumship is the my the, probably one of the most difficult things i can't do it i dislike it i don't like the energy which is interesting because i'm quite saturnian but for me that is general saturnian spirits fine switch them on and off like a light switch dead people for me it's like when you sit down chris and you want to do a toilet and your dick touches the side of the toilet it's that yucky oh did that just happen feeling it makes but I think... visceral reactions when a dead person tries to possess me and even if i'm open to it there will be heaving involved yeah i think <laughs> that's because they're not yes we would consider them to be saturnian but they're not supposed to be there. Does that make sense? Mm. So, you know, it's supposed to be a transitional point of view through Saturn, mm. not something that they stick around in. Mm. And I think that's why it leaves us both with that feeling of being dirty. Mm. It's because it's like you've got the cobwebs, you know, when, there's, when the spider's finished and all yeah. you've got is a dead carcass and a bit of stringy thing, um, that's that to me is dead people it's uh, you shouldn't be here um they should have tidied you away when they were finished like do you know what i mean like you know yeah. whereas saturnian spirits um are those kind of perfect spider webs they're uh, doing a job they're catching something they're doing they do they have a purpose and they're working on it uh, whereas dead people just yeah gross they're yucky. The people are yucky. Even grandma. Especially grandma. Especially grandma. <laughs> Especially if she died pissing herself. Ah, oh, she probably did. <laughs> um, okay, so where should we go next? Because I, I think we'll save avatars for the, not the blue people, we'll save avatars for the Patreon bit. We'll make them fucking yeah. pay in one way shape or form because that's too 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 deep down the rabbit hole that so, i think the other version is yeah. kind of counsel so mm. there are lots of ways in order to actually and it won't fit in the five minutes or so we've got left and um, they'll have to wait to the patreon for that too but the that kind of so not many people think about um, they're magical objects, or at least these days, unless you're a, a magician of some kind, witches don't tend to think of haunted objects or um, creating seats of power 
in objects. Um, so, you know, even though more and more people are starting to use runes, see, you knew I was yeah. going there, um, particularly with runes, runes have a potential, especially if they're done correctly, um, which I know is a, a contentious comment to make. Ooh. But if they're done correctly, have the potential to be seats of power. Mm. Um, and the beauty of a runic set is not only does it ha have the potential to hold um, an, a seat as a complete set, but also individually, um, depending on, again, how that magical object has been created. But in those kind of contexts, people forget um, or have forgotten and this information hasn't been handed down about talking to the trees. So actually having in that runic alphabet um, the ability to hold counsel with a forest, um, you know, or, or uh, you know, other entities that can be held amongst those branches, um, you know, which is why it's so important what a set of runic um runes are are made of um and why traditionally um forget all those pretty gemstones you've seen in your local new age shop that have just had them carved in um, and with a bit of nail lacquer um is actually the selection of what you create them with um you know, really does have an impact. <coughs> so, see, see, if we're talking about anchoring and that, you can see if a medium, a psychic medium, as in a human, their speech, they can use the voice box of the person, they can move around, blah, 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 blah. There are other forms of seat that sometimes are better suited for certain spirits and certain energies and such. But because they're too complicated, or no, I wouldn't say complicated, they're strange from a human perspective. So you'll hear, I think it was on the Lady Poison episode, Lady Poison talked about uh, something very old that was attached to the land, like a stain on the land. I'm pretty sure she said that in one of the interviews because I've spoken to her before about it. And to a certain extent, you could think that that kind of primordial ancient thing that's attached to the land and will not leave is integrated to it. So that land is not just an anchor from a magical perspective, but it's also a seat to a, a certain extent. It holds itself. And because this must be a vast thing that is extremely big from an energetic perspective, potentially bigger than this, their little merry planet we're on, but from a you know metaphysical going up through the metaphysical ladder chain that could be considerably big but it may be attached to just a small area of land which some people would come across and say oh that land's got an interesting vibe i don't like it or there's a sentience there but i cannot understand it all these kind of things is how much of the seat do you understand and are you adept enough to be able to identify why certain spirits and forces utilize certain seats and not others because that's an interesting one why is it that that one patch of land did it just end up making it there did that just where it attached it just permeated through some vortex or something into this land what is going on why has it picked that person why has it picked that forest what from an evolutionary perspective has meant that this spirit is this particular type of tree okay there's stuff that uh, we're going into the deeper deeper down the rabbit hole into the wonders of the theory of metaphysics magics and all of that that the armchair magicians will probably be creaming their little pants over because again that's what they like to do in it they like to talk about the theory not the practice so let's ignore the theory and let's get a little bit back into the practice. And we'll talk about that on the Off Witchcraft Patreon, which you need to get yourselves over to if you have not already, because we're talking about avatars. And we might even touch 
on magical wars and shit. 